we are now going to start an important discussion and a very interesting discussion where we are going to highlight that how our caregivers many time make sure and they actually never let their patient give up on their lives no matter what kind of disease disability they are facing and they try their best to bring back them to the normal life to the happier life we are joined by some of the most renowned caregivers of our country this afternoon in our discussion i would like to introduce them we have dr h s chabra is a he is a veteran in spine surgeon who bought the laser and endoscopic disc surgery to india and is the medical director of indian spinal injury center for more than a decade now isic as we know is the center of excellence in our country when it comes to spine related injuries and issues dr chabra is the president of the international spinal cord injury society since 2018 and is the recipient of prestigious order of the star of the italian solidarity award thank you so much dr chabra for joining us this afternoon my pleasure we also have dr sudhir kumar rawal he is the medical director and chief of genito euro oncology services at rajiv gandhi cancer institute in new delhi he is the first euro gynec surgical mm -hmm. oncologist of north india and the first to open retro public radical prostectomy in private sector in india sorry for if i might might have made a wrong pronunciation it may be because i don't belong to a medical background so some of the words are quite new for me so i'll i'll request dr uh, rawal to pardon and also give us more information when we talk during the session we also have with us shrimati jyotsna govil she uh, is an official and important part of indian cancer society and as we know indian cancer society is playing a very very critical role in ensuring that we are able to have a better awareness better skills and better protocols to deal with this disease which is taking a massive toll on our lives and productivity so welcome all three of you and i would like to begin this discussion uh one thing which we would like to highlight that these are more to share your experiences that how in whatever area of specialization you are working what we have seen and realized over the period that these are the disease areas be it spinal injury or cancer where it is very easy and natural for patients to lose hope but we see that as a caregiver and as a doctors you ensure that they are not you know losing their hope on their lives or not giving up on their lives and which helps bringing back the you know them or may help them bounce back to the lives let me begin with uh, dr jyotsna sorry uh, uh, srimati jyotsna is not doctor but see uh, you know with her experience in the cancer society and also i think her personal experience with something you know a disease like cancer where uh, if i'm not wrong uh, uh, jyotsna ji your father was diagnosed of cancer correct so so what has been that experience and what inspired you to work what you are doing as part of cancer society and how do you see the roles of our doctors who help us fight that disease thank you kamal ji uh, yes my father was diagnosed with cancer in 1984 and uh, 
in fact, long before then, I think as far back as I can recall, I have lived with this word cancer because my mother also died of cancer 40 years before that. So I was already reasonably familiar. And when I went with my father to the Tata Memorial Hospital, I used to wait for him in the corridors. And one day, Dr. Jassawala took me by the hand and said, come with me, you're doing nothing here. Come and do some work in my office. And he gave me the task of writing some of the information leaflets. He gave me some to read. And frankly, I couldn't understand them because there was so much medical terminology that I, I thought I knew some of the medical words, but honestly, I didn't. So I said, do you mind if I write this in simple English so that idiots like me can also understand it? And then you can see how you want to go ahead. So I started with writing these leaflets. Soon after, my husband, who was a naval officer, got transferred to Delhi. And that was the time that the Indian Cancer Society in Delhi was starting off. So I joined up here and I've been with the Cancer Society ever since. Uh, in the Cancer Society, when I joined, we only did cancer awareness and prevention. Screening. About 1991, we had a volunteer who came back from Canada and who was absolutely shocked that there was no patient support system in any of the hospitals or with any of the doctors. So we started what is now well known as Cancer Sahyo, which is an emotional support group for people with cancer. Our idea was that none of us were trained counselors, but we all had an experience to share some as survivors of cancer and others as caregivers of uh, cancer patients. And so we got together and gradually from that small beginning of three or four people, we have a group today which is around 75 to 80 active volunteers. We attend on patients at 15, maybe 16 hospitals today around Delhi NCR. We, with the permission of doctors, go in, we talk to patients. And I think the biggest uh, encouragement we give them is, especially the survivors, when they say, we have survived this disease, we know what you've been through, you will get your hair back, you will start to feel better, I was there, I'm here now, and you can also be where I am. They are living symbols of hope. So they offer the maximum encouragement. We also realize that we can't hold somebody's hand and say, we are with you, unless we can help them to avail of treatment as well. We are not a rich society, but we do manage to give medical assistance to about 75 to 85 patients every year. Some years we get lucky. When somebody gives us more money, we treat more patients. When there's less money as there is this year, we will take less patients. It's quite literally, ek hat se dena, dusre hat se dena. We have no interest in keeping any donation back with us. We insist that when people give us money, we are custodians of that money to be used correctly. So we have an initial diagnostic fund because when patients get this diagnosis of cancer and the first time they are given this big parchi to go and get this test and this test and this test and when they look at the price, they are ready to go home and die. So we give them that initial money to go to a radiotherapy center or to a lab or wherever to get their tests done. And when then they move on to the doctor and according to the doctor's advice, we then start to make sure that they get whatever treatment is necessary. 
as I said, we can't always give them the money. Therefore, we are also facilitators. We direct them to various funding agencies which are there and which are not well known. So people can go there and access the funds. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Goel. Govil, sorry, uh, you know, you highlighted an important aspect and then you said that these are all patients uh, whom your society support. They are living testimony of hope. Uh, having gone through your own personal experiences where, you know, you uh, lost uh, both of your parents uh, because of cancer, I'm sure that uh, you can understand the, the, the you know, the gravity and the trauma which any patient or their family undergoes when they are diagnosed with this disease. Uh, let me go to Dr. Rawal because uh, you know you have highlighted and we have started our discussion with cancer. Dr. Rawal, uh, you know cancer, a disease which is you know is the name itself uh, brings catastrophe among you know the the people when they hear that somebody in their life family or they have got uh, you know this disease and we see almost a million people i think are diagnosed or added every year of this disease or almost the similar number is also lost in those almost a million life i think uh, roughly uh, lost to the cancer when it comes to you know when these people come to you and as doctor as uh, jyotsna ji also highlighted that they are you know at a mental state where where any kind of hope is important and the hope i think mainly comes from the treating doctor how the doctor give them that you know solace and uh, you know assurance that they will be doing fine after you know the, the treatments they are going in which is also itself many time is painful and extremely painful so dr rawal uh, you know your experiences the kind of patients you uh, you know see and how you try to make sure that they are not giving up on their life and are bouncing back uh, to the, the to a healthier being yeah, uh, actually, the working in a cancer center, uh, what I have learned for in the past 26 years, that this disease has many aspects. Uh, well, not only diagnosis, uh, then during the treatment also, uh, the patient have side effects and uh, they have to be explained. So if the patient comes in the beginning, once he comes uh, to us, we are a tertiary cancer center and Dr. Madam Josna is part of us right from the beginning and uh, uh, when he comes to us in OPD, he comes with a big hope. Most of the time they might be having very advanced disease, but they will say that uh, we will be all right or not. And uh, at that time, we have to explain them very diplomatically, not to de make uh, depress them because if the patient loses hope, he cannot fight with cancer. This is the most important thing. Once you say you are just uh, there for two months, there is nothing we can do. I don't think patient will uh, even have treatment. So even if the advanced disease, we tell them there is still hope. And most of the advanced cancer also can be treated. It's not that we lie to them. Sometimes attendants are very, uh, you know, uh, caring or some, they want that we should not be telling them that the patient is even having the cancer. So, uh, but then everybody is different. So, the, uh, most of the patient they come to know that they are having, uh, they are suffering from cancer during the treatment in uh, in our hospital, especially when they see other patients and when they come to uh, uh, know uh, come across some other uh, you know any any other procedure is being done or their friend will tell them those they will come to know even if we don't tell them they will come to know, and uh, with that. Uh, during the process of treatment, uh, there are two things will happen that either patient will become all right and he will, you know, go and on and on with healthy life. He may be having some side effects or the disease will come back. And when the disease comes back, he definitely is uh, sometimes very disappointed. He says that I have uh, obeyed everything what you have said, even the disease has come back. What is this? 
so these are the things when we have, have faced difficulty and we tell them that this is the disease which behaves like this and still there is a hope don't worry there are many treatment but uh, many time the and now the with the treatment in many mo most of the cancer disease it has become like chronic like diabetes or uh, hypertension where you can give medicine a patient can live for many many years and that's what the uh, 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 the patient will actually will carry on and we have a psycho oncology department that is means that uh, there is a, a people who deal with psyche of the patient with cancer they tell they counsel them not only we counsel them they also counsel them and uh, many time when they are not still uh, uh, you know having accepting uh, the treatment we ask them to meet few of our patients who are doing very well and uh, uh, like uh, i can tell you in my field uh, i do uh, bladder uh, cancer which is urinary bladder we remove the cancer, uh, urinary bladder and the patient has to have a stoma on his uh, abdomen for urine that's uh, psychologically this patient will be devastated and uh, many patient will say that make something do something which can which is better than this i don't want to live with it and uh, if it is not feasible like uh, we do neo bladder also we can make neo bladder inside but if it is not feasible then i'll tell them that this is the only thing and if you want you can talk to my patients who are actually having has had this operation and many many renowned people who has had this operation so they get convinced when they talk to them they get convinced so there are many aspects and many ways to convince them and uh, uh, definitely the family is a big support without family and friends and relatives uh, they probably will not have uh, the outcome which uh, uh, they are supposed to the uh, and uh, during the treatment or after the treatment we still take care of them in follow up also we tell them that now says that the time is passing your cancer is not coming back so it is better it's that, that you will have your normal span of life not that that you will uh, be in having some other problems so any any problems come in in follow up you don't you don't leave patients just after the treatment in follow up their problems can come in any treatment they they can come and they also being taken care of thank you so much uh, dr rawal and uh, you know important aspect which you are highlighting that uh, it is important for uh, these patients to uh, retain their hope and you know there that, that's where you also try to uh, boost it up by you know making them interact with other patients so that they can see that if they can do it you know they can also uh, go through this uh, dr uh, uh, chabra uh, your area of expertise uh, is is very different and uh, in, in your uh, so, so cancer is maybe something uh, you know you have a, a maybe a longer uh, duration and then you uh, get diagnosed but in your case maybe even a maybe you know 15 year old or a 20 year old young man or a woman uh, can get an accident and then maybe bound to uh, you know uh, wheelchair for the entire or uh, rest of the life how do you uh, you know make these uh, cases come back and still uh, keep you know going in their life and then you know make sure that they are not losing hope because this is disastrous you know for somebody to completely become immovable at the prime of their age because of any uh, reason it can be uh, an accident or it can be any other trauma so what has been your experience what kind of cases you have seen where you might have seen that you know boosting their self confidence and i have seen that how how you lead you know you, you bring that energy among those even all those people who are on their wheelchairs but you you know you can see that the they, they still are very very uh, you know positive towards their life uh, how do you do that and you know what is your way of uh, making sure that the patients don't lose their uh, hope on their lives thank you um, i think um, we deal in a slightly different specialty as you very rightly pointed out uh, whereas um, in cancer you may also look at terminal illness whereas we deal more often in patients who would survive but have a disability 
and the thing is that it's a sudden occurrence right you there are young people who otherwise may have been very active in life have a split second accident and then immediately below the neck or the torso they lose all movement all control and uh, other than the physical disability as you very rightfully said one of the biggest challenge which comes and which we need to do deal is the psychological aspect and the psychosocial rehabilitation not only of the patient but also of the family members plays a very important component right and if you try to understand the psychology these patients who suddenly get paralyzed go through a natural process which various people have built in like there is an in, in, there is a phase of denial where they deny that this can happen to them then comes anger where they become angry at what has happened to them they stop believing in god or lo- stop uh, are they lose faith then there are various phases like bargaining depression and then they start testing and ultimately comes the phase of acceptance everybody may not go through all the phases some may go through a few stages but it is natural for such people to go through this trauma right what happens is you so see psychology personality develops throughout life in stages and trauma results in a natural regression and it forces them to relearn various stages which you have mastered not only emotionally but also physically like a paralyzed person has to learn how to be able to brush how to be able to feed because he has lost the movement how to be able to transfer how to be able to gradually become independent so this is a relearning process which puts a big stress on them so effectively what you have to do is it's not technology only more important than technology is the communication what the patients need is they need to be seen they need to be heard they need to be understood so very important aspect is information and communication very important aspect is emotional support very important aspect is guidance and direction so again one would say you do not need to sympathize with them you have to empower them you have to give them a hope but it has to be a real hope you have to draw a fine line between healing hope and false hope and you have to balance between hope and realism this this is a challenge and you need to master it right hope doesn't mean conveying that everything is fine right hope means to say that hope is that if you want you can still get back to a normal lifestyle right and here we use various strategies like a team approach and in the team is not only therapists uh, doctors but also psychologists psychiatrists peer counselors right and the entire team needs to work on the psychology it's not only on the psychologist and the psychiatrist everybody has to build that hope a realistic hope amongst them we need to do goal setting right we with and in the team i would want to say a very important component is the patient and the family so what do we need to achieve we draw goals we set goals every week we see where we have reached and once they see that they are progressing that brings in hope in them and ultimately we have to get them back into the community per se so a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, proactive lifestyle so if we were to mention about how we get about it also um, when we build up the hope the peer counselor in the team plays a very important part the peer counselor who has gone through a spinal injury and has got back to a normal lifestyle the two important things when he says communicate practical aspects of how to get back into a normal lifestyle 
it has a better impact on the patient because he can identify himself with the peer counselor right plus the peer counselor having gone through it can give more practical tips so is the important of a peer counselor and very often we need to give them examples of other people who have made it big like in our own institution our chairman major hps aluwalia the everest hero who was in the team which scaled mount everest in 1965 and 6 months later as a result of war injury he became confined to the wheelchair right imagine since 65 today right 2020 he is still going strong he is a role model also for able bodied people like us on how to achieve in life and as he says if you much more difficult than scaling the everest was scaling the everest within but if you can have the power of the mind you can achieve anything in life so the various means uh, which we use but very important component is goal setting education communication support emotional support guidance direction and draw a fine balance between hope and realism give realistic hope and not false hope to them otherwise it will result in frustration later on thank you so much uh, dr chabla and uh... certainly uh, the story of uh, major eluvalia is is really really uh, you know it's incredible uh, uh, it's beyond uh, uh, normal belief system that how somebody and the important part that he not he did not only come back to his life but he uh, built something which can bring that uh, support to many people for generations so that is more important that how you bring a purpose to your life once you have got that kind of you know uh, trauma or that kind of uh, uh, you know hit in your life uh, uh, jyotsra ji uh, so so you so you talked about your parents and there are so many patients which whom you are supporting and uh, bringing that important financial emotional and uh, you know social support i want to understand since you have uh, been at the receiving end and to our audience you know uh, so many audience watching us on live uh, you know bo- bo- how it is feel that like dr uh, rawal said that if you tell somebody that is just a 2 3 months of your life left uh people may not even go for treatment or they may decide to actually take this as a as a an in positive manner and say that okay if 3 months are left let me enjoy my life for 3 months i was hearing uh, dr bhavna sirohi uh, in, in one of the session uh, in our gratitude week saying you know one of the patient was diagnosed and uh, we suggested that there are 3 months uh if you don't go for treatment and 9 months if you go for treatment and the patient said that let me enjoy my 3 months and i'll rather have wine and cheese and then so that 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 also is very important because uh, i don't see that everyone will even accept the end so naturally you are absolutely right but i'd like to share a story which dr rawal's colleague dr devan often tells uh, he used to work in a different hospital as a young man and he apparently had a patient whom he told you only have 3 weeks or 5 weeks or something like that to live so go out and enjoy yourselves now he, he the years passed and he went on to become a major figure in rajiv gandhi and one day this elderly gentleman came and sat in front of him and he said that you know doctor i have come back just to prove a point do you remember this big piece of paper and on the paper was dr divan's handwriting in which he had said 3 months to go 6 weeks to go whatever it was and he looked at it and he said my this is my signature so <laughs> 25 years later this gentleman was there right in front of him so our message to most patients is 
that there's only one God and he's up there. There's nobody else who can tell you how long you have to live. Whatever time you have, live it well. Make sure that you can you know, look after your body, keep your spirit high, and between your body and your soul, you will be fine for whatever time that good, the good Lord gives you. I think most often, I'm, I, you know, sometimes people get very angry also, saying that you're being unrealistic. No, we are not being unrealistic. We have seen so many wonderful stories, people who have come back to us, whom we could hardly recognize from the skinny, yellow-faced, bareheaded people that we had last seen. And five years later, they come back to us. I've seen a young woman who was one of those people who break stones on the road. A daily wage earner. She came in with a advanced breast cancer. We found the money for her. We got her treated. But in the course of being examined, the doctor realized that she was very far gone within a pregnancy. She had been taking chemotherapy and by all rules of medicine, that baby should have died. But three weeks later, when I was in the hospital, she came back to me with this little portly, dirty little cloth and she pushed it into my arms and said, Le, aapi ne to hai. I was wondering, Ki kya maine hai? Pol ke dekho to the most beautiful little baby girl. That girl had survived her chemotherapy. She had survived all the hardships the mother went through. And there she was. What do you call that accepting hope? Everyone else in that clinic, we were all in tears. But this funky little mother carried on. And when we asked her husband, do you need any money? Do you need anything? for looking after them. He said, no, we eat, we eat. There are very wonderful people in our country. And it does not matter how much money they have in their pockets. It is the spirit that keeps everyone going. And it is our job to make sure that that spirit does not fly. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. This is a wonderful story uh, and definitely underlines that, uh, you know, if, if you are destined to live, nobody, nobody can stop. No disease, no disability, no defect can, uh, you know, stop you. Uh, Dr. Rawal, so, uh, you know, I, I would like to understand more from, you know, you that the kind of uh, cancers you are uh, you know, operating or you are uh, curing or managing. Uh, what what is that? Uh, you know, how much of that uh, we we see in our country? Uh, all uh, are all of them or many of them are getting diagnosed on time and then get the treatments on time. What is the scenario? So I am uh, primarily a urologist. I finished my urology training from uh, South CMC Vellore and came back to north and I was, uh, I wanted to become a transplant surgeon. I loved doing kidney transplant and that time uh, I did not get any place in Delhi. So I went to Gajabad where there I joined a small hospital. And meanwhile, Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Hospital was coming and one of my mentors who is no more now is Dr. K.K. Pandey. He was a cancer surgeon and I worked before going to Vellore with him. So he called me that, can you join this hospital? So I said, yes, I will be happy to join because I know the cancer surgery is another challenging surgery for which I always, you know, wanted to do any challenging surgery. I would love to do that. So I joined this hospital and I was first uro oncologist or uro genital oncologist in the north. There was in TMH, but nobody was in whole of the north. And uh, when I started with kidney, bladder and prostate, uh, then I realized that this subspecialty, because urology per se is a super specialty, and then I'm going in subspecialty, is not going to have enough work, at least in the beginning. So I saw the gynae oncology, which was the part of the uro oncology in TMH. So we combined them and started doing female genital urinary system cancer. 
so i did uh, cervix uh, endometrium and the ovary also and uh, uh, the ch- surgeries were very challenging especially the uh, surgery which you could not pronounce as a radical prostatectomy that was uh, you know uh, one of the surgery nobody was doing in country and when i started doing in private that was first one in private but uh, in aims and tmh uh, maybe a month before or maybe with me uh, other doctors had done that and uh, that is the prostate cancer surgery done for the cancer in the prostate which is organ confined which has not gone anywhere the spectrum of the disease has changed so much now of prostate that in 1996 we were having only 5 to 10% of the patients who will require this surgery while now we have 35% of the patients in our practice who require this surgery so patients are presenting early in last 20 24 5 years we have seen that patients are coming early not only the prostate even the kidney cancer kidney cancer when i was medical student in uh, 80s i selected in 81 so well, we used to have such a big mass in the kidney and then the patient will come we have we see now with a very small tumor in the kidney and these patients actually most of the time land up with the robotic surgery and removing only part of the kidney not the whole of the kidney so a spectrum of the disease has changed and uh, pe- people have got aware uh, awareness has increased and then the facilities have gone to the small town to the very small village uh, town the village uh, people can come to the small town and their ultrasound is there other qualified doctors are there so that is why the we are seeing more and more patients who can be cured or at least can be given the longer life we just cannot write them off that nothing can be done in you which was actually one of the key, one of the statement or one of the part of the treatment when the patient will come to us in a very advanced disease when a very advanced stage and then finally that patient will uh, we cannot do anything and we just write uh, best supportive care treatment that is just take care tlc we used to call as tender loving care at home so not only the genito urinary cancer the things have changed in uh, carcinoma lung uh, lung has gone in a huge changes uh, the is treated by medicines and uh, the survival has increased from few months to many many years because the all the pathological classification has switched over to the molecular classification now we see the driver mutation of the disease and then the drug is given same is happening in other cancer also like ovary or prostate or breast where you see a particular mutation and the drug is there for mutation and the future of cancer science is going to be this it's not going to be surgery or maybe robotic surgery can evolve to, to some extent into a single hole surgery and uh, but mainly the things are going to come as the uh, drugs which can be given orally patient can write the tablets to the patient a patient can go home and they will be not be having side effects as the chemotherapy has having said that uh, chemotherapy is is used to be such an a toxic uh, treatment for the patient that if some patient have such an a bad side effects that they will say that we will not have treatment rather we will die these things have changed now this their supportive treatment for the chemotherapy also and then the, there many drugs have come alternative drugs which are equally effective or better effective with a less side effects so there are huge changes have occurred in have occurred in clinical science in in cancer science not only the surgery only also in the medical oncology and then the radiotherapy radiotherapy which used to be only cobalt radiotherapy in Uh, 80s and early 90s we were the first one to have a linear accelerator in rajiv gandhi cancer hospital in north and now it has gone to uh, other true beam therapy like very conformal igrt imrt and then you must have heard cyber knife and then the proton therapy which is there in apollo cancer hospital in chennai so things have evolved not only the treatment also in the presentation of the patients who were most may, mainly coming in advanced stage or uh, stage or locally advanced stage now they come in the early stage and even if they are advanced stage they are not in a very advanced stage even advanced stage you can divide into two a very advanced where you can't do anything that stage is not seen nowadays most thank you so much 
they are treatable and you can definitely offer them a good quality of life and longevity thank you so much dr rawal so i think uh, you know the, the multiple uh, advancement in the uh, treatment uh, you know options and uh, streams what i i i am you know trying to derive out of it that i think the treatment of cancer has now become less suffering or less painful yeah. is that true to say yes can, can i add something here yes i think cancer is possibly the only non communicable disease that you're talking about a cure a possible cure you don't say there's a cure for diabetes you don't say there's a cure for heart disease you manage those diseases with medication for the rest of your life cancer can be cured and that is what should give the most hope to people who are diagnosed with it and and if you see the madam will remember our hospital so logo says that the cancer is curable if detected early if detected early that's the rider yes thank you dr rawar <laughs> so 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 cancer is curable and uh, that's a big if, hope that's a big hope detected early yeah so despite uh, you know that diabetes is not curable uh, heart diseases cardiovascular diseases are not curable but somehow the society has started accepting them much more easily than cancer which is curable but the problem is that we are not many time but that is changing dot dr rawal is saying that we are getting patients in a much early stage at least the aware one the people who are uh, you know having the right kind of medical pathway and access but for many who don't have the access it may still not be true dr chabra uh, so there is a painful treatment which is getting lesser painful but is curable so there is a hope at the end of the tunnel your specialty area many time does not involve that kind of uh, you know complete normal life because when you are saying that you know even patient has to relearn to come to the normal life actually it is not a normal life you know it is a, somehow you know you have to adjust into that limitations so you know how much of that and i would all like i would like to understand that what is the number and volume of such people and how much of it is preventable that it does not happen yep um, you've raised a very important issue and um... we are talking about an ailment which till say 8 decades ago was described as an ailment not to be treated right uh, people would die not directly because of the ailment but because of the associated complications right and to for example during the first world war uh, only means 90% of the patients who got a spinal injury during the war there is a lot of trauma right so 90% of patients who got a spinal injury died within one year and only 1% survived 20 years right so things changed during the second world war when for the first time they showed that if rehabilitated properly they can lead a normal lifestyle and things have improved now people who are paralyzed can ride a motorcycle can walk there are gadgets which are available right and when you say cure i think it's the same as we talk about cancer right i think the statement prevention is cure holds true for anything and everything right <laughs> whether you call early detection or prevention or whatever right so imagine a person a young 20 year old girl going in a vehicle not wearing a seat belt the car overturns three other people with a seat belt escaped unhurt the girl is thrown out of the window and is paralyzed for life right so imagine had just the use of a seat belt at that split second would have resulted in the girl leading a normal lifestyle subsequently right so 
it is very important message which should go out that prevention is more important right and uh, uh, should be strongly enforced again secondary prevention like early detection is very important so if you prevent the on further onslaughts of the disease it is very helpful there is a lot of advancement from the time when it was described as an ailment not to be treated today right when people can get back to a normal lifestyle and today with stem cell therapy when we can see a ray of hope at the end of the tunnel right um, but again we have to know the fine balance right um, for example the hype created by stem cell therapy and that people may recover whereas we know that it is still experimental and it's only in animal trials that it is possible the hype may put off the patients to try to achieve what they would otherwise do right uh, so um, a patient who you say okay we need to train you to be able to get back to a normal life lifestyle despite this disability and then he reads okay stem cell may make it possible for me to walk again and become normal he says why should i go through this rehabilitation process when so and so is offering me that i will get back to a normal lifestyle with stem cell therapy so that is false hope right so we have to draw a fine balance between realism and false hope that's what i we have to tell them we have to raise a hope right that we have to tell them that when you lose an ability your other abilities become further refined like a blind person's perception skills are so fantastic he can move around right similarly and sometimes you realize what you can achieve when you lose one ability right like right my wife uh, was enjoyed non vegetarian food like anything right chicken and everything and then she stopped non vegetarian food and then she realized you can have enjoy vegetarian food as much as you can non vegetarian which she would there are so many types which you would before so similarly when a person loses the ability to move the lower limbs understands that with the hands or maybe with the mind also right some of the top most researchers they could not even move their head and they came out with theories which have revolutionized the world so the power of the mind is there you have to show them hope and you have to draw the right balance there and this becomes more important in chronic ailments like ours where they will be leading the life but they need to be able to tap on their potential to get back to a normal lifestyle thank you dr chabra uh, this is important i think uh, uh, the one of the example of uh, which you know we, we have a little bit example of dr uh, sorry major chabra uh, alwalia and also uh, so you, you highlighted very well uh, uh, jyotsna ji i i would like to just you know it's a closing remark we would be uh, ending our session and it has been a wonderful uh, to hear all three of you and uh, see how it has been uh, you know now possible to save much more life and reduce much more sufferings when it comes to uh, you know the these critical uh, diseases or uh, conditions like cancer and then spinal cord injuries which dr chabra is uh, treating uh, jyotsra ji uh, how much many of lives as the dr chabra said that in 90 Uh, in, in during the first world war 90% of the people could not be saved who got this kind of injury what you are seeing that how many of cancer patients we are able now to save and uh, how many of them we may be losing because we they, they don't know about it and they are not getting diagnosed timely or we don't have uh, you know the healthcare reaching to them to to get them diagnosed on time start video pe karo na apne uh can i can i come in yes please 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 i'd like to turn that question a little bit 
Uh, I don't think that. Mm -hmm. I, I, Mani, I don't can you mute them? Yes, please. Yes, uh, Jyotsnaji. I don't think I've ever counted numbers of how many people we were able to help or save or anything like that. Because every single person, their life is so precious that you cannot quantify it. I leave it to doctors. Dr. Rabal will give you a better answer uh, based on their statistics and so on. Uh, but I would like to bring you back to what the present situation is. Today, your hospitals are being partitioned to take on uh, some part of COVID and the rest of cancer. I know that is true of Rajiv Gandhi. I'm sure it's true of other hospitals. The point is that cancer patients, it's a long treatment. It's not something that they come in once, get treated and go away. They have to keep coming back, they follow up. And if there isn't that kind of regularity, the disease progresses so that it becomes more difficult to treat. So my appeal to everybody is, COVID is frightening. I agree completely. But then I'm also old enough to remember when the Asian flu first came and everybody was dropping dead all over the place. That was also frightening, 1951. But there was no panic like there is now. And I think that you have to have a sense of perspective that there are these diseases, cancer among them, I'm sure spinal injuries, everything else, where patients are suffering and dying year after year after year. And if you add up all those numbers, they would be very impressive, far more than COVID is. So my request would be that please keep a sense of perspective. We will get over COVID faster than we will ever come to defeating cancer. Cancer has been there from time immemorial. It will continue to be there. And we, the cancer patients need that little bit of space between them and an uh, infectious person if they are to deal with their disease and come out of it in good shape. Thank you, Jyotsraji, for bringing in that uh, the, the, the whole COVID scenario also, which is actually impacting uh, the the continuity of healthcare for all such uh, you know diseases which cannot wait and we are also you know highlighting that you know people can go on lockdowns but diseases can't so that you know the continuity of yes. treatment uh, has to uh, continue. Uh, Dr. Rawal, quick remark. We will be closing. Uh, what what is your message for the people? Uh, you know maybe living with somebody who has uh, cancer. Who, you know, the caregivers, and also, you know, all those who can prevent this disease by taking right decision, right action at the right time. Kamilji, I'd like to say that uh, cancer is a tax on life. Uh, there's nothing comes from outside in your body as cancer. It is your cells. They start dividing. And since they are these cells are your cell, the immune system cannot kill them and they become First is a small lump and then big tumor and then they go everywhere. So uh, uh, the best thing you can do yourself is go to the doctor early. Uh, there is disturbance here. Uh, go to doctor early and do not lose hope. There, there are uh, uh, plenty of treatment. One thing which is very famous in medical science that if you ask any patient, and keep giving them hope that uh, there is treatment for is still treatment for you that patient will be actually living for that time and finally uh, if you exhaust everything and if you say that there is nothing like i can't do anything on you patient will die maybe next day or next to next day so <laughs> never uh, lose your hope there are a lot of treatment uh, only thing that they have to take care of themselves the relative uh, have to support these patients they, Suffer like and not only by the disease, they suffer by the, even by the uh, treatment. So uh, they require not only emotional support, they not only uh, um, uh, 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 other supports medically, but emotional supports also. 
so that they can come out of uh, this catastrophic events uh, which uh, sometime you know can take their life if not uh, supported by everyone thank you so much uh, dr rao dr uh, chabra your message for the uh, people watching and especially uh, how I, i you very rightly mentioned about that you know a small uh, uh, you know care like uh, making sure that you are wearing a seat belt can save you from uh, one of the most biggest maybe the biggest disaster of your life but you know overall your message for the viewers today yeah i would want to say that uh, it is true for everything whether cancer spinal injury or anything right life is a gift and while we still have breath we can make meaningful contributions right quality of life is more important than quantity of life and mental health is more important than physical health right if you get a physical problem if you then let your mind be affected right then that is the double whammy right with the power of the mind you can achieve anything right and uh, that various people not only major alwalia christopher reeves uh, there there are n number of examples right where people who have no power in the limbs physically challenged have achieved much more than we can achieve in right so and at the end i, I would want to say realistically there is always hope it is for us to find it so that would be my message to everyone thank thank you so much dr chabla uh, jyotsna ji dr rawal for your time and also our heartfelt gratitude for the wonderful work which all of you are doing in service of humanity in your day to day work you are trying to bring uh, people that hope that health that happiness uh, which is essential for human life